This is Stan Skystis speaking to you from the new noise control facility at Vickers Incorporated, where this recording was made. Details of this facility are shown in figure one of the accompanying design news article. Pumps and hydraulic motors are the major sources of sound energy in the hydraulic system. Thus, any program to control the noise produced by a hydraulic system must begin with an analysis of the noise produced by these components. This is the sound of a typical nine-cylinder pump operating at 1,800 RPM. The frequency characteristics of this sound are shown in figure two. Note the highest noise levels occur at multiples of the fundamental frequency, which is the frequency of pumping events. At the second harmonic, at the third harmonic, at the fourth, and at the sixth harmonic. This demonstration illustrates the important fact that all major noise generated by a positive displacement pump will have a frequency which is some multiple of the fundamental frequency. Mathematically, this fundamental frequency is equal to the number of revolutions per second multiplied by the number of pumping chambers or cylinders. The horsepower transmitted by a pump is proportional to the product of speed, displacement, and pressure. The noise generated by a pump is also influenced by these design parameters. However, the relationships are much more complex and must be established on an individual basis. Figure three demonstrates the effect of increasing speed while holding constant pressure to permit the use of progressively smaller identical units to deliver a constant horsepower. Note the very large variation in noise levels when speed is increased. 900 RPM. eighteen hundred RPM thirty six hundred RPM in figure four the effect of holding speed constant and varying pressure to maintain constant horsepower is demonstrated although increasing pressure again results in increased noise levels the effect is not as great as that caused by increasing speed, 750 PSI. Fifteen hundred PSI. And three thousand PSI. In figure five, the relative effects of speed and pressure are compared for three combinations that have the same horsepower. Note that speed has a much greater effect than pressure. 900 RPM and 3000 PSI. Eighteen hundred RPM and fifteen hundred PSI. Thirty six hundred RPM and 750 PSI. Because of the interdependence of the three variables, it was not possible to isolate their individual effects in these demonstrations. However, the results show that for transmission of a given horsepower, lowest noise levels are realized by using the largest possible pump to reduce pressure and speed requirements. Further, when a choice can be made between an increase in pressure or speed, increased pressure is preferable because of cumulative noise generating effects of higher speeds. These effects include both a higher noise level and a shift to the higher, more objectionable frequencies as shown in figure six. Some noises attributed to the pump actually result from improper system design. The most detrimental of these noise generating effects is cavitation. Some of the numerous conditions which can lead to cavitation are shown in figure seven. The distinctive sound of cavitation is caused by the implosive collapse of bubbles in the fluid. This is demonstrated in the middle of the following sequence.
Figure 8 shows the effect of a chattering relief valve, another noise often mistakenly attributed to the pump. Here is the sound of a pump with a chattering relief valve, followed by the sound with another valve operating normally. In this article, we have shown how airborne noise in hydraulic systems can be controlled by proper choice of operating parameters. Although a discussion of liquid-borne and structure-borne noise is beyond the scope of this article, these effects are also reduced by the procedures demonstrated. Further reductions in noise can be achieved by avoiding resonance in the design of system components, by isolating of structure-borne noise, by acoustical filtering of liquid-borne noise, and by the use of attenuating devices, such as enclosures and barriers.